You ready to do it to him? Oh, sorry, what? Hold on. What did you say? Oh, you're waiting on me to do it to him? Okay. Hello again there. Hello there again. Hello, comma, there, comma, again, period. Exclamation mark, question mark, upside down, question mark. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna be putting edible things in hot liquids and eating it at the end. Listen, okay, I'm not Australian. And you may not be Australian. You might be Australian, but you may not be like me. But that's completely okay, because today we are all gonna take a trip to the Outback Steakhouse. Our own out Outback Steakhouse, except without the steak or the Outback, so it's just a house. Welcome to the house. We're gonna make a bloomin' onion. Now, I don't know if a lot of you have ever heard of that, which it's very possible that you haven't, but pretty much it's like one big old freaking onion that's cut up to look like this crazy flour breaded and fried. So we're pretty much just making onion rings, but the onion is still on the onion. One large family of onion rings still connected at the base of the onion. We're just making a big fried onion. This is also known as, I think, uh, an awesome blossom at Chili's. I only know that from watching The Office. I've never had it. I've never had it anywhere, ever. I had been to Outback Steakhouse a couple times when I was very young, but I only remember just getting full on the bread because they would just serve bread and I would just eat it all. And it come with this big old steak knife and I would just, and my mom would be like, stop. And I'd be like, no. Then my mom be like, get out. And me be like, okay, I'm already full on bread. And it was free. <laughs> I was a good kid. Do I have something on my face? Would you guys tell me if I had something on my face? Well, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, today we're celebrating onions, Australians, and uh, YouTube following me on Twitter. So uh, what you're gonna need is uh, a big old pot. You're gonna need a bigger onion. Well, thank you for watching the recipe. See you guys later. I actually couldn't figure out what type of onion is the right one for this recipe. Uh, I saw some recipes saying white onion and I saw some recipes saying yellow onion. So I got both. But I think I'm making a game time call and going with the white onion because it's a little bit bigger and a better shape. It's like more oval a little bit. It's more oval this way. Me. It's not the craziest recipe. It's not super complicated. We're pretty much gonna cut this up in a kind of a grid way so that once it's done being cut, it'll all just kind of like flare out like little pieces of onion. It looks really cool actually. Um, so we're gonna cut this up and we gotta prepare a dry mixture of flour and some spices. And then we have to prepare an egg wash of egg replacer and whatever else, vinegar or something, milk. And you're just gonna go our normal, like dry, wet, dry, wet. And then we're gonna deep fry it in this big old pot. And it's a, it's a deep pot because it's a thick onion. It's gotta fit, you know, anyway. I'm ready to have a blooming onion. You're probably ready to have a blooming onion. I don't, I don't know if it's morning for you. I don't know if it's 3 a.m. and you can't sleep, but both of those scenarios, a blooming onion could improve the situation. Hypothetically speaking, okay? I don't wanna talk for you, but you need this in your life. So don't click, don't click away, please. Please stay. All right, so everyone grab your knife. Hands up to the sky, cause it's fucking party time, baby. All right, you're gonna cut the top of the onion off. So we're not gonna be cutting the part with the stem or whatever that is. You're gonna cut the, the top. So you're gonna cut that off so it's just flat. I believe you're gonna peel the, the very thin layer of skin off of this, cause I don't think we wanna be eating this. If you wanna eat this, you could just peel it off and save it for later for a snack. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to cook for your entertainment and feed myself at the end. So we are going to cut this, dividing the onion into quarters. So it's gonna be even, you wanna keep like about a half inch from the center line of the root so you don't cut through, you wanna stay, you know, you want them to stay attached. So I'm gonna, this is an important part. So pay attention, take notes. You can take notes on your iPad if you want. Just don't play games, okay? The video I watched, this onion that she was using was the biggest onion I have ever seen. Like you have the in initial incisions, it's like we're doing surgery. Um, and then between those incisions, you're gonna cut 
three times between each line. So you're basically dividing that into thirds in the middle of your already made cuts. Two, three. Now we have this. Come on, work. Do onion things. Why is it not flowering? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you just gotta get your hands in there. Some of them will be kind of still attached, so you need to break the top. There we go. Look at this bad boy. Yeah, you might need to go in there with your hands and just kind of break apart the ones that are stuck together. I was, I would err on the side of like not cutting too deep because the moment you cut too deep on this recipe, you're you're breaking pieces off the onion and that's like the last thing you want. The whole reason we're here is to make just spectacular looking fried fattening food. Damn it, I just broke a piece. Okay, everything's fine. Yeah, I definitely didn't cut deep enough, but I'm okay with that. Look at this, this is insane. Awesome Blossom is a cool name for this because it actually looks like a flower blossoming. Like a really emotional, make you wanna cry type of flower. <gasps> oh no. Gotta pour some out for the homies. Ah, oh, I'm crying. I'm actually crying. Stop it, stop it. Okay, yep, bep, bep. Ah, oh, I broke another piece. Pour some out for the homies. This is where the finesse comes in, okay? Stop breaking pieces. Talking to you, me. I'm not an insane person. Okay, that piece broke, whatever. I think, honestly think, I think this is good enough. Like, it's not perfect, but Pobody's perfect. Okay, so once you're done crying about this onion, we need to get our flour mixture ready in a really oversized bowl. So we're gonna get two and a half cups of flour, which I think is kind of overkill. I mean, it's just, it's like an onion, but whatever. You know, one cup, two cups, and we're not baking, so we don't have to be exact. Two and a half, whatever. That looks about right. Grab our spices and we're gonna do a teaspoon of garlic powder. Why did I do it like that? All right, that's about a teaspoon. I don't, I'm so all over the place right now. Then we're gonna do paprika, two tablespoons of paprika. That's kind of a lot. Prepare yourself. Why am I measuring with it? <laughs> Make sure you're being really exact on your spice measurements. Okay, that's about it. I really hope that said tablespoon. Okay, it did, we're good. Half a teaspoon of dried oregano, it's about like that, easy. Cayenne, we're gonna do a lot of cayenne. A lot, oh, one teaspoon. One teaspoon of cayenne, oh, that's a little more. Cracked black pepper, and last but not least, do some salt. And we're gonna take our spices and mingle them. We're gonna take them to cocktail hour so they can all hang out. So this is the flour mixture we're gonna need. We'll set that aside. Next, we're gonna do the egg mixture, which pretty much just means we are going to use some egg replacer and oat milk. And this has a guide on it of how much you wanna use, but you know what they say about guides. They're really helpful if you wanna do something right. I'm gonna use my tiny little whisk and get this mixture nice and even. There's gonna be one thing I do different on this recipe than I've done in all of my recipes pretty much is after we're done breading it with the dry and wet and like battering the onion, I'm gonna freeze it for like 30 minutes. I'm gonna give it like 30 minutes to, to firm up in the freezer just because so many people have told me when it comes to deep frying things, it makes a world of difference. scientific part of our recipe. We are gonna take this onion and we're gonna go first into the dry mixture and I'm gonna go face up and I'm gonna just try to let like all the flour get in all the crevices. Really just kind of shower it in flour. Showered in flour, baby. This is such a deep bowl, like you can't even really see inside, but this is kind of what we're looking like here. And I'm gonna just kind of let all the flour now fall out so we don't have loose flour in here. I'm gonna put my whisk over here and take this little spatula and we are going to put it in the wet mixture now. Sunny side up. See, this is, this, this planning is not, it's not it, chief. I'm gonna turn it over upside down, I don't care. It's going upside down because I don't know how else to coat an onion this big. The onion feels like it's like growing in size. What the heck? How is that even? I'm just gonna spin it. I'm spinning it, baby. This is the spin method. 
You're gonna do it like this. Trust me, nothing is gonna go wrong. Just spin it and uh, everything will be fine. This is not wet hand, dry hand method. This is just whatever method. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Or just make a really strong, angry fist. And that should, you know, get everything put in place. Okay, you know, I don't know if this is good or bad, but this is like really chunky looking. I'm just trying to get this a little bit wet. I think it's about done. And I'm gonna put this on its head. Cover it and we're gonna freeze it, just like this. This is how it looks. It's like a really weird onion on a, having a tough day at work. See you guys in a little bit after I'm done freezing this. I returned a little bit early because I decided while we're letting that finish in the freezer, we can get our sauce ready. I've heard a lot of different names for the sauce that I wanna make for this, which is technically the Bloomin' Onion dipping sauce. But pretty much it's going to be a mixture of a few things. It's gonna taste sort of tangy and creamy as well. You're gonna need mayo, ketchup, sour cream, Worcestershire. And I couldn't really find, and I didn't put a lot of time into it, I will admit, but I couldn't really find a completely plant-based pure horseradish at the store I went to. So I think I'm going to omit that. And in lieu of the horseradish, I'll add a couple more things that have a little kick to it that might be a good substitute. So we'll start with a little bit of ketchup, two teaspoons, decent amount of mayo. I don't know, two tablespoons of mayo. Then you're also gonna do two tablespoons of sour cream. I'm gonna use the tofu kind. About a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Um, since I can't use horseradish, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow mustard seed and a little bit of ground white pepper. And I'm gonna grind this mustard seed and see how that comes out. I'm also gonna do a little lemon because I know horseradish has a little tang to it. And let's mix this bad boy up. That is a really unique sauce. It's really good. It's like not quite an aioli, but also not like too tangy either. It's like in the middle somewhere. Really good. It's like really banging. What? Oh my God. This is why I'm a Virgo. I know where everything is at all times. We have this in the house? Yes, babe. We got it for something else. I don't remember what. Let's go. I'm gonna add it to this now. Okay, well, it looks like we have horseradish, so. No substitutes, y'all, we got horseradish. I didn't know where it was, Jenna did though. I know where everything is. I just realized that this um, doesn't work with an induction cooker. So, I have to figure out a new way of frying this. After performing some science, it turns out that my induction cooktop is not working with any of my pots that are deep enough to fry a whole onion, so. We're gonna have to fry over here, and what I'm gonna try to do before next week is order or go to the store and buy an induction cooker safe kind of deep pot. I need actually a couple of them. Please excuse the giant camera in the shot. It's the amateur hour over here. I'm just gonna be adding about a half a pot's worth of oil, I think. Okay, so it just came out of the freezer. It's pretty firm. I'm gonna turn it back over. And it's, it's looking really good. I'm just gonna try to separate out these little pieces. So I think technically the term here is flash fry. We're gonna flash fry it, get it real crispy. And that's gonna be face down. So we're putting it in face down first. Face down, ass up. That's the way we make blooming onions on this channel for family friendly content on YouTube. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. This is gonna be interesting, we will see. There's a lot of oil. I think there's too much oil. Oh God, I'm spilling oil. Everything's okay, everything's fine. I'm not counting, but I think it's like about halfway done for the top. All right, that looks like it's been about two minutes. I'm going to try to flip it with two hands. Flip successful. We're owning, we're owning. Look at this thing. I think uh, today's episode is about giving it your best shot. 
Okay, I have to admit that there was a, like a monicum of panic going on just now because it was overflowing the oil a little bit because I don't have a big enough pot for this. So that's my own fault. And I think some of that panic led to maybe not the perfect execution of cooking this, but I will say, like if you listen, like it's crispy, it's hard. Like it, when you when you touch it, it's definitely a hard exterior. There are certain spots in the middle, I would say, that are maybe a little soft and kind of sad. Switch this on to the cutting board like this. Do away with the theatrics. I guess we'll uh, try to break off a piece and take a bite. Okay, this is a piece. Uh, hello? This is really good though. Like it tastes, like the crispy pieces, they taste amazing. It was just a really hard like recipe to nail. Every part that got fried and crisp turned out so delicious. As you can see, I have taken apart the onion and re-crisped everything. So this looks like honestly little pieces of fried chicken. This is crispy. I think this is how we want it. Try some of your blooming Wow, what an entrance. I'd like to wish a collective happy 20 million subscribers to Jenna. Aww. We're so proud of you, all of us. Thanks, you guys. But mostly you. Because <laughs> you your just nap? said it. It was good. I didn't really get much sleeping done, but I tried. Okay. Wait, this looks good. So I pieced it apart because it was part of it was like undercooked when it was all together. You don't have one of those slicers like they do at the restaurant. No, no, huh? no, no. I have none of that. I had to just Who make cares? do. It's less of a blooming onion and more of just like it's a bloom. An onion. It's a bloomed onion. It already bloomed. Got it. Okay. Try that piece, maybe. It's really hot, but try it. The sauce is banging. Mmm. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, I'm not allowed. Let's get a good crunch. Mm. That tastes like a restaurant one. It tastes just like a restaurant. Oh, <gasps> how does the batter so crispy? I hate the oil up really high. Oh, okay. The sauce is so good. <gasps> Shout out to Jenna for finding that fucking horseradish in our kitchen. I did not know we had that. Oh, this is so hot. I haven't had one of these in forever. I've never had one of these. Never? I don't even really remember ever eating onion, onion rings. Mmm. Is this what onion rings taste like? Mm-hmm. This is really good. But in a circle. You know what's crazy? We're just straight up eating onions right now. Uh-huh. The thing that bothers me about onion rings is when you take a bite and then you pull the whole onion out. Look at this. This looks like a piece of fried chicken. Mm. Look, listen to that crisp. Ooh. Oh. It's perfect, really. I mean, I think the appeal of the Awesome Blossom or Bloomin' Onion or whatever is that it's served to you in a way so that you and everyone can eat it. It's not practical though. Like when I got that thing out of the fryer, I would try to pull one out and it would pull the skin off or it would just be too hot. Like yeah. this is way more, I feel like if you make this at home, maybe take a picture of it when it's done in one <laughs> piece and then cut it up and fry it again. It's so good. It really does taste like a restaurant. Really? Mm hmm So this is twice fried blooming onion. It's so naughty and like good and fried. This is your celebration meal for 20 mil. Mm, I'll take it. I rate this meal 10 out of 10 on taste, on flavor, on texture, on calories, mm. all of it. Just 10 out of 10. I can't believe this has no calories. Yeah, none. Amazing. Wow. That is so good. For real though, it's a batter. It's very it's simple. It's like so crispy. Yeah. It's super, Ooh. it's really like not a hard recipe. The hardest part is physically manhandling that giant floppy wet onion <laughs> and not letting it spill over the place and cooking it right, but. Thanks for letting me eat some of your creations. You can have as much as you want. Mmm, <gasps> I think I'm gonna be done. That's dangerous. Well, with a couple of second efforts, we made this recipe happen. Definitely would recommend it. If you're up for an interesting challenge, try to make a blooming onion. But don't try it for the first time when you're having a guest over because you might fuck it up and it might be embarrassing. But if they're a real friend, they won't care. I'm give a special shout out to nobody for partnering with me on this video. Right now you can use nothing to get none off of whatever product is in this video. I need to go to the kitchen store and get more pots and pans. 
because no pots and pans are enough pots and pans when you're just doing it to them on the regular. Don't feed this to your dogs. Stuffed animals are okay. Cats, I don't know how to interact with them. Anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out. One last crunch. Bye.